pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. flag. United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay, number three, first bit of uh, business we need to do is <clears throat> elect a uh, chairman and a vice chairman. At this time, let's open this up for a, uh, a new chairman, and uh, let me open, but I'm going to nominate Bob Garlic, and uh, if anybody else wants to step up or wants to oppose, speak now, or if not, that's my nomination. As long as Bob's good with that. Okay. <laughs> Any opposed? All in favor, aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to pass it over to you. All right. Thank you. All right. Now we'll take nominations for vice chairman, whose duties will be to fill in if the chairman is not available for that meeting. Do we have any nominations? <laughs> All right, we have one nomination here on my left. Any other nominations? Charming. Yeah. Uh, no further nominations. Let's take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. We got it. Okay, moving on to item number four on the agenda. It's public comments and announcements. Do we have anybody that wants to make an announcement that's not concerning one of the items on the agenda? Nobody? Okay, we'll close item number four and move on to item number five, the regular agenda. The first item on the agenda is item 5.1. Discussion and action to approve the minutes of the December 7th, 2021 regular Board of Adjustments and Appeals zoning meeting. <clears throat> do we have any discussion on the minutes or do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion. Do we have a second? And I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All in, not in favor? Okay. Motion approved. Okay, moving down to 5.2, public hearing to discuss a request by Moy Corbett, applicant on behalf of Craig and Christina Sparling, property owners for a variance from Chapter 20, Zoning Section 20-14, Parking Regulations, Item B, Number of Parking Required, Dash 7 of the City's Code of Ordinances. The applicant is requesting one parking space per unit instead of the required two parking spaces per unit located at 208 West Kingfish Street, Lot 8, Block 66, Padre Beach Subdivision, Section 5. Okay, do we have anybody who wants to speak in favor of this request for variance? Come up to the podium, state your name, please. My name is Moy Corbett. I represent Craig and Christina Sparling on behalf of uh, their Can you project. speak in the microphone, please? Yes, sir. My name is Moy Corbett, and I am representing Craig and Christina Sparling for St. Castle 3. Um, we are trying to develop that property there um, on Lot 8, and we understand that the code requires uh, two spaces per the current code. Um, however, when the owner purchased this property, uh, you know, he utilized the declarations and the bylaws that were written when this uh, condo regime was established. And back then, uh, each, each unit required one parking space. And when he purchased this lot, he was under the assumption he was going to be able to utilize the existing parking, which would meet that one per one ratio. However, based on the current code that wouldn't that wouldn't work so we're trying to see if there's any possibility 
that we could, you know, you know, based on his understanding and the declarations and bylaws that were written and established many years prior, even before the city, I believe, was incorporated, if we could be able, if we'd be able to stand on those uh, on those items and you know, be able to have one parking space per unit so that we could go ahead and develop this piece of property uh, within Sandcastle. Um, you know, I, we want to do everything that the city and the county requires, and we, we plan on doing so. We're just trying to figure out how we can meet in the middle to be able to get the parking issue uh, taken care of because there's no real way for us to be able to put parking uh, in there and still you maintain the look of the property. Um, and so we're just, we're looking for some help from you guys. Um, you know, we, there's plenty of parking there uh, based, on, based on one unit, one parking space per unit. And, you know, I'm just, I'm, the owner is really hoping that we can get something worked out today so that we can get this project through full design and you know, and bring some additional revenue to the city. So um, with that, I'll just leave it with you guys, and I appreciate your time this morning. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak in favor of the request for variance? Okay, do we have anybody who wants to speak against the request for variance? Okay, and I'm hearing none. Uh, Alex, can we have a staff report? Good morning, uh, Alex Sanchez, Public Works Director. Um, we have uh, two letters that came in. One was for and one was against. Uh, like he said, uh, there is a, uh, a an agreement that was done there that says one parking space per unit, but our code basically says two parking space per unit. And this is like, I can't remember what year, but it's it's, it's been years since that agreement has been in place. Okay, this request is just for a single residence, or how many residents? Yes, it, it, everything is already established, the parking is already there. There's only one lot left uh, that hasn't been built on. So this is the final one in that area? This is the final one in that area. And uh, I, 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 I was over there looking at the lot yesterday, and I saw that there seems to be like four parking spaces in front of that property. Yes. I mean, why is this a problem? Do we oh, under If you count all the units around that area, uh, there's not enough to do two parking spaces per unit. But like, like the. But uh, I think I counted do, ninety. Is that correct? Ninety. Uh, I don't have that information with me, but I count it from the satellite. Look like about ninety. I think seventy-five units. Okay, so uh, the well, including this new one, I think it's seventy-four originally. So the way I understand it, the HOA of that condo development requires one parking space per unit, and our code requires two. Two. So the question on the table here is. The thing is, did they create this uh, by themselves? In, in, the, in a sense, they didn't create it by themselves because the, the, uh, their regime basically said one space per unit, so they didn't create it by themselves. So that in, in itself, it's a hardship. Yeah, so they're establishing the hardship, the HOA rules. I'm going to do two. Alex, I have a, a question. When the condos were originally built, uh, was there a requirement to have two spaces per unit at that time? I believe it was in the county, so there was no regulation. Okay. And I understand, too, that that entire complex, including the new lot, is behind a, a gated area. So it's not really on a public street. You have to actually live or have a, a reason to be in that, right. that side That's of the street correct. in order to get in. I would like uh, some clarifications on some definitions, things how um, will be recurrent, <laughs> let's say. Um, on-site, off-site, on-street, off-street, and one save for later, but might as well get out of the way, is lot line adjustment. 
Okay. And to start on the more specific is the on-street, off-street parking. Which would this be considered? This would be considered off-street. Off-street, because they purchased it. Right. And it's their street now. Right. Okay. And Any other questions to Alex before we close the public comments? Any more questions to Alex before we um, go into discussion? Yeah, I was kind of in the middle of something. One, one question. Uh, <clears throat> we, we have vacated Kingfish, is that right? That's okay. correct. All right. Okay. All right, so there's on-site and off-site now. So that would be on-site parking, correct? That, I'm sorry. Yes, that would be on-site parking. Okay. Um, and off-site would be? Uh, off-site would be somewhere else. And Anywhere Besides else? that property. Anywhere else? Yeah, anywhere else. It, even if it's adjacent? Even if it's adjacent. It, um, to be considered, it has to be 90 feet from the property. To be considered as, as on-site? Off-site. Off-site. Okay. It has to be over 90 feet? Mm, no, less than 90 feet. Is on-site. Is on-site oh. on -site would be the property itself? And offsite would be some other property within 90 feet. Okay. In in that district. Adjacent or not. Right. 90 feet. But if it's adjacent, it can also be. Yeah, if it's offsite. From my readings. Well, it, it, the property itself, depending, the property itself would be on site. Anything <laughs> outside the property would be offsite. I guess let's get to brass tacks. Does the city have a definition for on site? On-site would be on the property. Do they have a definition for off-site? Uh, yes, we do. No, you don't. No? No. If you look at the off-site, is 90, 90. I looked at definitions, and all there is in the O is open space. I'd like to see what kind of, like, there, there, there is an option for off-street, or off, sorry, right. off-site. Right. But we don't really know what off-site is. Right. Well, there's... There's kind of a definition on saying that it's 90 feet from the property. No, that's not the definition of it. Well, I mean, that's a qualification. Well, okay, qualification. Aside, Sorry. but but that even if it's adjacent, it, it, apparently it can be offsite. Right. Yeah. So, even though they pur purchased this on-street parking and made it off-street, it's adjacent, so it could be offsite. Technically. Okay. Just so we know we don't know what we're talking about. That's all I have. Okay. Thanks, Alex. All right. Any more uh, public comments or discussions on this item? Okay. We'll close that. Uh, 5.2, public hearing. Move on to 5.3, discussion and action. To discuss a request by Moy Corbett, applicant on behalf of Craig and Christina Sparling. Property owners for a variance from Chapter 20 zoning, Section 20-14 parking regulations, Section B, number of parking required, Section 7 of the city's code of ordinances. The applicant is requesting one parking space per unit instead of required two parking spaces per unit located at 208 West Kingfish Street, Lot 8, Lot 66, Pottery Beach Subdivision, Section 5. Okay, the board members have any, wanna lead the discussion off? I guess I'll go again. Um, all right, so they bought the proposed right of way, right? And it's a gated community. And now, and they also, in their uh, HOA, say that each house is, or each proposed development will be accorded a separate thing, uh, or hearing, I guess, to see, and apparently they did that and they approved it. I think those are the, the facts, I guess. Um, and they could have, I would imagine, allotted them an extra space during those proceedings. Um, However, they did not, and they allowed them to go forward with one. And if I'm mistaken on that, someone correct me, please. 
Well, because I mean, they have 74, 75, if it's one to one, and they have 90 spots. I mean, in, I, we can count boats or no. I mean, I, I, that looks like most of those are extra are taken up by boats. So it seems as though instead of giving them the extra one and not making us go through the rigmarole of trying to change code for parking and possibly setting a precedent that they're, they're like, yeah, let the city figure it out. You know, this is a kind of a difficult problem because there's a fixed number of parking spaces in that development. And there's more condos than there are parking available to give two dedicated pieces of parking spots. Yeah, but this is the last one. So they're really <laughs> locked in on the space. 15 extra spaces. Yeah, and they're locked in. So the question They're is, not locked in. They have 15 extra spaces that they use for boats that they didn't want to accord for yeah. a car. Correct? So, yeah, the question on the table is, is that... Those are the facts. Which is the more important situation, the, the city code or the HOA requirements? This is what kind of we're coming down to, the way I look at it. So it's so, a matter of... So we afford... Or we tell them, hey, take one of your boat spots and give it to them, or we change the code, right? So essentially what you're saying, if I understand you correctly, is that... Although the condos that were there previously, there's not enough space to allocate two parking spaces per unit. However, there are enough extra, there's more parking spaces than there are units, even with this new build, that they could take, um, I think what they're building, four units, is that correct? No, it's one unit. Uh, individual units, it's a, a building with four units inside. Bedrooms. Okay. But that's a single family home and needs okay. two parts. So let's say it's, it's one unit then. And they have one, so they need there. one. So they could take... I mean, that's just the math. I'm not, I'm not, I'm okay. not like, stating anything that's out of the ordinary. This is just the, the facts in front of us. Right, right. So, so, yeah. so what you're saying is there's enough parking they could allocate two spaces from the extra for that particular new build. Am I wrong? Actually, you're not. Right. <laughs> and that's math, it's yeah. the basics of the situation. I, I guess this is a question for uh, Mr. Corbett. Is the parking spaces are not dedicated, right? They're open to, to residents? So there's not a, you know, numbers on the spot where they, you can only park here? Okay. So, any more discussion? Somebody wish to make a motion? I make a motion to approve. And motion based on we have uh, vacated the street. It is behind a, a secured entry for those for that development. There is, uh, at any given time, there is parking in that development to accommodate these additional requirements. What do you mean when you say vacated the street? We've vacated the street. And we've given it to the association. Okay. They have gated it. Okay. Sold it. Yeah. So, uh, motion to approve on my part. So we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Well, let's vote on that motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 All not in favor? Say same. I'll abstain. I'll abstain. Okay. Okay, we have uh, motions passed. All right. Moving on to item 5.4 to discuss a request by Arturo A. Nelson of Costa Azul Development, LLC, property owners for a variance from Chapter 20 Zoning, Section 20-7.1, District in B-2, Residential Multifamily Dwelling District, Section A, Area with and Death of Lots, the City's Code of Ordinances. The applicant is requesting a width of 23.75 feet instead of the required width of 25 feet of lot, uh, of lot for lots one and two, block five of Sunny Isle subdivision, and lots seven and eight, block three of Padre Beach subdivision, section I. 
Okay, Alex, you want to give us a report first on this one? Thank you. Uh, Chairman, as, as you said, they're asking for 23.75 um, feet, and our rules basically say 25 feet of a lot is the minimum. So they're, they're basically making a couple of lots smaller than what is required. There's 12 lots in this project, right? Yes. And four of them do not meet the width requirements. four of them don't, don't meet it. But the rest of them do. They do. Okay. So the request is for those four specific lots to allow us them to build on less than 25 feet. That's correct. Okay. And, and they made it so that the, at least the size requirement is there, but not the width of the, of the lot. Okay. So, so in other words, we're trying to squeeze a, a little bit more out of that property is what we're trying to do. Okay. Do we have anybody in the audience that wants to speak for this project request for variance? Yes. Yeah, come to the podium, state your name. Hello, I'm Stanford Knowles. I'm the architect for the project. And uh, I feel your side of the bench. Uh, I was, was, I don't say hired, nominated, but we rewrote the Cameron County ordinance for the, for the island uh, some years ago. Herb Houston was on the board with me and various others. So we took two years rewriting that ordinance where you run into this situation of the parking stalls not being correct in the numbers that you wanted. So I'm also on the board for Laguna Vista, where I live. Uh, we're local, by the way. Uh, we're from, representing Art is in Brownsville, Chris is in Port Isabel, and I live in Laguna Vista. Uh, we've been working, or I have been working on the island since the 70s. Uh, so I know the island well. First came here in 1956. So we've seen the changes. We know what we're up against. The reason we brought this to the board is, in fact, if I may, and somebody can hand these out, or do I need to bring them out to you? I wanted you to look at this. The last two pages uh, show the elevations of the building. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Part of what I was trying to achieve here is to show you that it's a cohesive subdivision. It's really a more of a planned development. And as a planned development, we try to make flexibility of, every, of one item is what we're looking for. We're meeting the side yard, front yard, and rear yard setbacks. We're meeting the size of the lot. We're only looking for that one instance. The hardship that we run into is the fact that you've got an extra 10 feet of setback from Gulf Boulevard. And I know the beautification of the, of the Gulf Boulevard is part of the attraction for us on the property. So we want to enhance that as well. And you'll notice that the lots on the outside, both sides to the left and right, are full size lots. In other words, the 28 feet um, on uh, the Gulf Boulevard is over the 25 requirement. The other side are 25 and 25. So the neighbors were not affected by what we're doing. We kept the same size of the lots. We're over the 2,500 square foot minimum. We're at 2,625 or 2,675 for our smallest lot. So in the, in the sense of that, if you look at the elevations, when we're done, you cannot tell that we've asked for a variance in this property. So it becomes a, a nice setup. The other thing, and because of what we we're faced with, this development works for us and what we're trying to do in the research. We've given you a, a, a good letter of the reasons behind this and why we're asking for it. If we don't get this variance, the next step we have to go is condo. And we being residents who've been on the island for many years know that I think uh, a low density, higher value property is something that the city would uh, like better than a high rise condo project. Beyond that, even when you talk about parking, which reminded us, we've got 54 parking stalls. We only need 24 to meet code. So we've gone beyond the uh, request there in a big sense of the word. So there's a lot of different reasons that we feel that this would be easy to uh, 
to approve in the sense that we've met all the requirements from the code. The only thing we're asking for is help on those four lots, as you say, to make them 23.75. What we'd run into otherwise is a 15 foot wide house on the corner of Gulf Boulevard and Marisol and Palm Boulevard. That'd be difficult to build, difficult to sell, difficult to live in uh, for what we're trying to do in a valuable property is this. So if there's uh, other questions about it, we've got uh, a good, a uh, good number of uh, issues or things that it, the other thing is too, it's 12 units. It'll be under a single management. So it's not like we're gonna sell these out and there's gonna be different people coming in asking for different things. It'll be under a single management for the property, even though they're single owners. And we hope, of course, this is a family-based project uh, with five bedrooms in each unit. This is something a family would love to have. So it essentially stretches the dollar of the people who may be interested in buying or purchasing because they're going to be able to bring the family down. And that's what you, I, th I see more in, the, in uh, South Pottery Island. And I see the city essentially over the years would like to see that better than just a high-rise condo project. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that'd be a good direction for the city. I guess I have a question. Uh, I'm, I'm not in the right spot right now, and I can't really flip the page that quick, but it said that there won't be an HOA, though? There'll still be an HOA. We're doing that specifically to maintain the management. So, okay, so it won't be like a rental management. It'll be an actual HOA, like PUD, pretty much. Right? And It'll be an HOA that's managed by the 12 uh, um, units. The HOA does not necessarily need to be uh, uh, convergent or run in place. That's something for the ownership to decide. The uh, thing is to maintain a single management. So yeah, there will be some rental units, of course, when the off season when people aren't there or during the season when they aren't there. Uh, so the opportunity is to rent the property, yes. Uh, but it's not to be singular managed. Singular management brings up issues that I know you've seen here on the island. In a sing under a single management, we can maintain the whole property. For maintenance is for the maintenance. management, not for direction, governance. Correct. So there, won't, there could be separate owners coming with different ideas of how they want to govern. Much like a city, much like an HOA, yes. You still have to find a common ground to make things happen. I guess it, I, I get, okay. it, it's a little confusing. I don't know because <laughs> I don't really know the difference of, in, of what you're proposing as to, because it, it says in there that it, was, it wasn't going to be, but then you're saying it will be. So I don't know. But it, it kind of is. I, I think the thing is that we've got to, if you have a maintenance management program or an HOA with 12 owners, a lot better than a maintenance management issue with 60 owners. Okay, I got a question. On, as I'm reading the request for variance, it lists four lots, but on your drawing you show six. <clears throat> so. We did change the rear yard uh, of the lots facing uh, Gulf Boulevard to make that a consistent line. Okay. So the rear yard is still maintaining square footage. I'm moving the, the, that lot line on the back. Well, you got the three center lots. <clears throat> 23.75, three on one side, three on the other. Okay, yeah, there's six lots. B, 8A. So well, there's six instead of four, and correct. So there's <clears throat> six duplexes, basically? It's not subdivided. It's six duplexes with a firewall in the middle to make them townhomes. So they're being built as a townhome with a duplex lay set up. Actually gives us five foot setback on the sides of each of the, uh, essentially a duplex setup so that we've got outdoor windows, fire escape windows, on that side yard setback. Because remember, there's five bedrooms on the floor plans. If, uh, does your packet include the floor plans? 
Well, I'm just looking at your drawing right here, and it shows six lots at 23.75 right. width, but your request is only for four. Oh, well, then we need to amend that uh, request to six. And uh, I guess we got a procedural issue here. How was that missed? Was that something we missed? Or is that something that staff missed here? I think the engineering firm was the one that wrote it up. <clears throat> I don't have the original paperwork on here. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if, hopefully if this was uh, something that staff missed, possibly that could be overridden by the board. Well, uh, I don't we know. I guess we've got a legal not. issue here. Yeah. I believe what happened was it was originally submitted to the defective four lots, even though it created <clears throat> the variance for six lots in the center of the property. It was four initial lots that were affected. Okay. So if we understand that as a fact, it's, under, it's four lots that are affected out of the six. Four original lots. Four original lots. Correct. Which we're dividing up into 12 lots. So can we consider it in that? that? So it is a subdivision or it's not? Nope. The, uh, huh? we were originally it's six lots, six. correct? Yes, correct. And we're, four lots are affected. I thought, well, Which, so the two interior ones, the seven and two, you're squeezing, right? Yes, sir. So it essentially is the variance request is for four original lots to be made into eight lots. And we still have the other two lots, which are not affected in the change. The front lots, eight and one? The two lots on the west side, towards the bay side. Oh, six and those three? Those two lots are exactly the same. We're not changing those. Okay. We did that specifically so that the neighbors would not be affected. But you're squeezing the four. We're squeezing the four lots. But in this, it looks like lots. The, the, only the middle one is... And this one, it looks like question. the middle one's the one that's squeezed, and the other two are normal. So has it been replatted yet, Alex? No, it hasn't oh, been No, we're waiting yet. for this variance to be approved. So we are talking about four lots, right? the four original lots, because right. we cannot finalize until we have the variance. Once it's replatted, then it would become Right, so I think that the wording is correct, that we are talking about the four original lots being divided to eight. And in that conversation, the two lots facing Gulf Boulevard proposed lots are 28.75 feet. So those are still within the code. Whereas six lots internally out of those four would become six that are affected and they're 23.75. So six and three on the west side are not to be affected. We're not talking about those. Yes, sir. And those are two duplexes, right? Right. right. So and they'll be in harmony with the rest of the community. Okay, so those six and three are basically off the table. We're not talking about those. Those, right. not, you're not asking for anything for those. Right. Now, you want the other two, or sorry, the other four. Mm -hmm. Is this a lot line adjustment? Can I get, a, like, this, this is another definition I'd like to hear from the city. Because I'm not sure if there's a lot line adjustment or if it, this is, something entirely different. Do you mind, uh, you mind if I can hear from the city? Sure, please? go ahead. Thank you. So well, basically they're, they're gonna subdivide, but in the process of subdividing, they're not meeting the, the, the well, width. Well, uh, is putting a duplex oh. subdividing? No, they're, no, not, not a duplex, but they wanna do townhomes. So they're subdividing to make townhomes. So this is a subdivision. It's a subdivision of but four since, lots. Since, it, since the subdivision doesn't meet the requirements, we can't go to P and Z until we get a, a variance. Mm -hmm. It's approved, you know. So this We're asking for isn't it? Right. Wait, <laughs> you said four. Yeah, four yeah. to be made to four, is be, four eight. lots are being made in four. eight. And then the, the other two are the same, so it's 10. Well, those, the other two will They're, still become townhome lots, so those are still going to be replatted. Divided? Townhomes. Not yet. We're asking to change it yeah, from uh, single-family duplex to townhome. So this is a change townhome. of use? The lot width requirement is 25 feet. 
So we are sub the, resubdividing, and it is a lot like It's a reclassification, and it's not really, you're not subdividing those two lots. I thought we were taking those off the table. When, when we say, okay, to clarify that again, it's townhomes that we're asking for. Townhomes are 25 foot width on the lots. So yes, the first two lots are affected. The ones on the west side are affected in the fact that we're changing them or asking to change them from 50 to 25 foot lots. But those are within the code requirements for a townhome. So those shouldn't be a, a big issue in the sense that the character of the development, as you see, it looks like three duplexes. So it doesn't change the character of the community or the neighborhood it, uh, within you know, how many blocks. The uh, other half of that equation is the middle lots are the ones that we're asking for the narrower width from the townhome or ordinance, which carries 25, we're going to 23.75. So we're asking for one foot three inches taken off of each lot to fit what we're trying to do, provide as a product. The townhome looks like a duplex, but right down the middle of it, we have a firewall that goes up and meets the requirements of code for a two hour wall to separate those two units. The good part is fire department's never gonna be upset about it because we don't put 12 units in a row and connect them as one building. We've actually got five feet, 10 feet actually between buildings, five feet to the property line. And in that five foot to the property line, we got a, a standard setback. Yeah. So back to my, my question, this, this is a standard lot line adjustment then to accommodate? For yes. This is a standard yeah. lot line adjustment. Yeah. Okay. okay, and what was the reason you made that one, not all the lots, 25 feet? You had the room to do it. Why have you got one big lot that steals footage from the other th lots? Uh, a moment ago, if I take three lots, each one of them are 50 feet wide. If I try to divide those lots into 25 feet, the lot adjoining Gulf Boulevard with an additional required uh, city setback from Gulf Boulevard of 10 feet, we end up with a 15 foot wide building width. And you can imagine with the elevation we have or any type of property, trying to build a home on that property in that neighborhood, that's 15 feet wide is, is just not gonna fly. So you, that's your hardship? That's something the public's going to, going to want. Yes, sir. What is your hardship? That's our hardship. Your hardship is that... The fact that building a 15-foot wide home on a 50-foot lot in today's <clears throat> environment is never going to sell. It's not, it's not something we see the community that's wanting financial. or even the city wanting on that property. So we're asking your help to keep, keep the character of the neighborhood by allowing us this variance on the other six lots which means essentially that we've divided it up such that the character of the buildings, the character of the neighborhood is consistent. And it also keeps us low density in an environment that I think deserves to be low density, or we feel deserves to be low density. I have a question for both you and Alex. Have you considered or is it even feasible or possible to take lots one, two, seven and eight and replat them so instead of running lengthwise um, north and south switch them so they're running lengthwise east to west in other words you would have lots one two seven and eight okay. yeah. flipped around the other direction leaving um lots uh three and uh -huh. what six alone still that was one of our initial uh directions so that would give you enough space without but, requiring a variance but he has an ordinance that we can't come off of Gulf Boulevard and get any parking because you have a beautification section along that. See, the city already took, what, 10 feet? You've got a 10-foot wide easement with sidewalks and it curves as it goes down. Right. You've got landscaping on there, which we expect, by the way, to enhance uh, during a process, during the development. Uh, are you talking about? Can't cross over that. Are you talking about park. additional parking besides driveway and garage? Yeah. Well, we don't allow any cut-throughs on golf anymore, right? No. So the front yard has to be 
on the side okay. streets. Okay. okay. So, but you're saying we require an extra ten parking feet spots. of easement on the side. I mean, as well as setback on the side. As well as the ten feet you already have. Yeah, it's a ten foot setback. On the side yards on Gulf Boulevard. Gulf Boulevard. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because it's an adjoining street. And Alex, it's not possible to have the uh, um, eight out of the twelve units facing Gulf. But not facing Gulf, they would have to create a street in the property to got to access uh, driveway, Marisol or Palm. Yeah, a driveway with parking. Right. And then that eats up twenty-five feet, more or less. Mm -hmm. Or parking underneath. I'm talking I mean, about a street. See, this this and is then, where this, and, we, and we've we've gotten to this plenty of times before on the board, uh, that it comes down to basically there's plenty of ways to design something like that's one option he doesn't he doesn't like it i, I understand that um but if there wasn't another option mm -hmm. that's a hardship yes sir. The, the, this and the, we have to we and if we were to approve this we have to validate our approval with the saying hey there is a hardship which we were supposed to do on the, all of them, including the first one, but we didn't. But, you know, we don't always follow the rules, so <laughs> that's well, that. I understand. Our, our hardship, and it becomes a, also the, the question of, of the mind of the city and the mind of the board is essentially we want to keep it low density. We'd like to do that, and we can pull it off this way because of the dynamics of the property, because of the location in South Padre Island, if we can't get this to occur, we've got to go high rise. And that's that's where our hardship is. We'd like to keep this as a family property, keep it within those bounds. And we think this is the, what we could do in today's economy, today's market. So your hardship is you don't want to build that. another floor on. I'm sorry? The hardship is you don't want to build another floor on the skinny lot. We don't want to, we, we don't feel it's uh, realistic to build a skinny uh, house on a on that lot, so no, 15 feet wide. No one can wide. build a house there. I'm sorry. No one can build there because it's just it's a it's a write-off. <clears throat> it's not a marketable property. You know, if it's a condo and I go if I go six stories and I have a parking garage under it, which I think you started to allude to a moment ago, that would be what we faced we'd be faced with if we can't get this to work. To, for us to develop the property, this is the low density form that I think meets the city's uh, directives. Well, I, I get, I, but your either or thing is okay. Well, you couldn't do the same amount, or it gets into we're, all we're talking about is financials now, right? And that's a problem. Well, we're talking about commercial viability of a project, correct? In a big sense of the word, and commercial is money. Well, we're, asking, it, we're, we're in the weeds. This. We're in the weeds is all I'm saying. You're in the weeds in a sense, yes. But again, <clears throat> if we just said let's keep the lot lines where they are, we could still come back and build. Then I've got a 15 foot property that I don't think is com uh, compatible with, this, with uh, what the city would like to see. On Jane, let, let me. Let me interject. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting you. Sure. No, uh, okay. Think of uh, the uh, Opal project there on the corner of Gulf and yeah. Montana. Okay, <clears throat> parking garage, five, six stories, uh, condominium project. Okay. What he's saying is that that's not conducive to this immediate area. That those those high rise or those larger denser units, uh, it, it, it's not compatible. It, it just doesn't fall into that area. <clears throat> so what he's proposing with you know, an approval is to build, I don't know if you, well, you've got what he handed you, but he's, he's building something that, that belongs in, our, in this neighborhood. Yeah. Well, actually, right. that's a first rendition. We're going to make it look better. Well, I know, but th <laughs> this is something that... Yeah. It's, I talked to... City again, please. Um, if this is a pure lot line adjustment issue, 
if this whole thing was one lot, what's the issue? Uh, there won't be an issue. The only thing is that they have to do like a, an HOA with, with what else? a condominium regime. Right. That would be a pure lot line adjustment then, correct? Well, you they would hey, probably have default. to subdivide into one lot, but then you're going to have an issue with the parking. Cause that he has plenty of parking. No, but on on site parking. Oh, geez. There you, go. <laughs> you don't have a definition for off site parking. So what the hell is what what is on site? On site means that it's on the property itself. <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking about parking in the Gulf. No, I know, but but once you once you do it one lot, you basically you're forced them to do one one entrance into the property, which forces them to do parking underneath. Why? Because that's, that's an ordinance. You have to do parking underneath? That's an ordinance? No, well, it's 24 feet wide uh, for each lot. For an access to for a access. parking lot. Right. Correct? So right. he can have as much parking as he wants, right? He can have enough parking on the property. On site. On site. And so that would be a pure lot line adjustment, correct? Uh, that won't be that any. We, that, we, that all these other hurdles go away. Okay. Well, I guess. Okay. Uh, I'm done. Okay, some of this we can get into the next section of discussion, but uh, are are you finished? I would like to speak. Okay, somebody else wants to speak for the project? Yes, very briefly. I apologize. Arturo. Come up the microphone and state your name. Yes, sir. Arturo Nelson, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. If, it, if this is converted to a condominium complex, then you have to have one entrance going in for parking, so then you end up losing the nose in parking which where you end up losing spaces. There's a complex on Verna Jean, I'm sorry, I apologize, I forgot the name of it, where it's very awkward because you go in and then you've got two or three lots that are side by side and then you've got the nose in on the out, which, I mean, when you're renting these little electric cars and things of that nature, it works, but with pickup trucks or any larger vehicles, it's extremely difficult. And with the design of the project and everything, we'll end up losing parking spots. Uh, what we're doing with the area is along Gulf Boulevard, the improvement that's been there, we're not going to be consuming any of those lots by any way whatsoever because each one of the units is going to have four and a half lots or four and a half stalls per lot. And so we've tried cutting this up several different ways and doing the condominium complex and all that, but we run into, like everything out here on the island, it's parking and being able to utilize the most that we can and making sure that our project doesn't take away from any of the public parking that's up on the on, on Gulf Boulevard or anywhere else. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to do three stories high, elevator to the roof, and essentially being able to get enough units to where it's gonna be a great tax base for the island, it's gonna be great for tourism, things of that nature, and it, it's aesthetically it's gonna be something that the island has never seen before. We're doing a coastal modern. We're doing our best to, I mean, right now with the wave of business that we have with SpaceX and everything else, it's going to be rooftop viewing for the rockets and everything else. But we're trying to work with what we've got. And like I said, the parking stalls making it in, that was one of the, one, one of the ways that we're looking at skinning this cat. But it completely revamps our parking situation and honestly doesn't make it flow very well for people to get in and out and to be able to maximize the space that we have. But, so okay, so you go from twice the amount of parking you have to not enough? Well, because what happens is, is that if you make it one, one HOA, one condominium complex, then as you, let's say this is the lot right here, and these are the units. So you've got nose in parking where everybody can park like this, where you're gonna have to have one entrance and then have to pull in to the sides if it's organized in that manner versus being able to put two cars here and two cars here and another stall in the middle. You've got to go in and then go to the side. So when you're dealing with that short width right there, it just, you, it doesn't- We're not changing the width. That's what I don't get. No, no, no. I, I, I understand. You, but what I'm talking about is the orientation of the parking. To where, we, to where if we make it a condominium complex, I don't have complex, anything about that. The parking requirements are different, and that's the reason why we well, decided. I, I, that's why I asked the city. I said, can you guys keep the exact design you want, 
if it was just one lot. And you're saying, okay, no, we can't do that because of parking. I, I don't see that because I don't have any visual and I don't understand well, how you go from yeah, twice as much to not to enough. This, as soon as you make it a single lot, you can only have one entrance. I understand that. So as soon and as that's also an entrance. exit. So you have an ingress, egress, which is what you need. So I don't get why multiple ingress, egress is going to help your parking orientation. I guess I, I, I don't see any visual. It's hard to understand from what you guys are saying because it's kind of a mix between okay. a sales pitch and the, you know, on the ground, what we have to look at. A single. And I don't have it to look at. Okay, conceptually, a single entrance forces us to a high rise because everything will be parked, parking will be on the first floor underneath the building. All right. Because so. of a single entrance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because okay. I've got, I've got to enter and I've got to pull left and right. Not really. Parking. Our, I'll, I'll be back here asking you for a variance for multiple entrances if we were to try to keep the parking we have now. See, our, right now our, our parking is off street, similar to what you have everywhere you, you're else. Going, you're going from double the parking to having not enough and having to go off street. We'll I, I just, I, I can't see that. I don't I, know. No, I can design it to have enough. I don't, I don't understand why that's such an issue. And to, to even vote on it, I guess I, I need more information. So okay. I gotta, uh, we can talk about that in discussion. Okay, you got any more uh, comments from the audience for people who are in favor of the request for variance? Do we have anybody who wishes to speak against the request for variance? Okay, hearing none, we'll close item 5.4, public hearing, and move into item 5.5, discussion and action to discuss a request by Arturo A. Nelson with Costa Azul Development, LLC, property owners for a variance from Chapter 20 zoning, Section 20-7.1, District B-2, Residential Multifamily Dwelling District, Section A, Area Width and Death of Lots of the City's Code of Ordinances, the applicant is requesting a width of 23.75 feet instead of the required width of 25 feet for four lots, which we've just talked about. Lots number one and number two, block five of Sunny Isle subdivision and lot seven and eight, block three of Pottery Beach subdivision, section I. So now is the time to... Uh, discuss what we uh, think we want to do here. Uh, I want to remind the board that this variance is a permanent attachment to this property. If we do grant the variance, it'll remain with the property no matter who buys or sells or what they do with the property in the future. And also is that we're trying to establish a hardship condition and that can't be based on financial gain or anything like that. So the applicant is stating his heart, his main, if I understand correctly, his main hardship is the uh, requirement for the 10 foot setback on golf causing some issues with that first lot there. So with all that, do we have any discussion? Yeah, the, uh, as far as the hardship is concerned, it seems to me that if that lot was one further uh, west, there would be no issue. You no. could subdivide it and do it. And the hardship exists because it happens to be right on Gulf Boulevard, and the city requires that 10-foot setback. So it's impossible for them to build the townhomes as planned because of the city ordinance. And what he's asking for, really, is a foot and a half variance for just uh, the interior townhomes. But won't be noticeable from uh, any of the, the uh, adjoining streets. That's correct. Well, well, well know, said. I, I, get, I get what he's asking for here, and, and I think these look great, and I agree I'd rather have low density to, than, a, than a high rise there, but anyone else that has a lot on golf also has this same hardship if they want to build there, and they won't be able to, so I'm not sure that you know, that, that it's, a, it's, it's not a hardship unique to him. 
it's a hardship that's unique to anyone that has a lot now on golf that had that got 10 feet of their lot taken away. Well, that, the 10 feet, it runs from this area, more or less, to the end of the island, to the, uh, to the end of Gulf Boulevard. And, and really, it would be... The feet is in place all the way along Gulf Boulevard. So, it, any, any there's, there's very few, but any of the vacant, remaining vacant tracks like this, they're under the same Gulf setback. Right. And he would still right, have that's, that that's setback. That's my point. Right. He would still have that setback. He happens to own the lots adjacent to that where the difference would right. come with realigning those, those property lines. Do you have a comment? Yeah, if you'll allow me to that, come to the Yeah, come to the microphone, please. The uh, consideration is this. Number one, it's... South Padre Island, in this sense of the word, some sense of the word, is mature, meaning that most of these lots are developed. And when you do look at Gulf Boulevard, there's only two or three positions or two or three situations where empty lots could actually do this. And on the other half of that equation, for the city, if you agree in low density, this is an avenue for the city to stay low density because those other lots are going to be pushed to go high rise without this opportunity. So we actually came to this originally in the thought process as a plan development. And a plan development gives us that flexibility to do similar things such as this and keep it as one development. That's why I mentioned it's going to stay under one management. For whoever buys it forever, it'll stay under one management. We're going to operate it similar to what you would with a HOA, but it's not a, a full a uh, full-blown HOA that you'd have in a 60-unit or 100-unit condo project. That, that's why I wanted to address it in that sense of the word. So, yes, there are a few, but not many that would be affected. And, again, to, to maintain low density, this is a good avenue to make it happen. <clears throat> Thank you. Marta, we, I see we had two letters against. Is that all we had? Correct. Okay. There are two letters in your packet against this request sure. so any more discussion do we have a motion you know I just want to uh, comment on the uh, letters against I, uh, having read those yesterday I didn't really feel like those particular letters addressed the specifics of this project um, and I don't think they really understood what uh, uh, Mr. Mills is trying to do, just an opinion. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion or more discussion. Any more questions for the... Uh, I think it's a good use for that lot. Uh, I will make a motion to approve this item. I would second that motion. I think that the <coughs> hardship has been established based on... The, uh, the, the building that's proposed. Do we have any more discussion? I personally would like to see something in the motion regarding this issue with the number of lots, though. <laughs> Sorry. I will do that now. <laughs> Terrible. Okay, I would like to have something if the, in the motion stating the clarification of the number of lots. Because right now there's four and they haven't been replatted yet, but that yeah. Yeah, will affect probably so. That would, be, that would be absolutely necessary for when it comes to planning. Um, the planning and zoning, yeah, they want to know exactly what that would yeah. be. So we'll, that would be cleaned up by then. Yeah. So in our motion, in my motion, yeah. you need to amend your motion to amend the motion, <clears throat> the the motion to state approval pending the replant, Plan pending the replant to the uh, uh, this drawing. There it is. There it is. Um, amend the motion to uh, to rewrite your application or your uh, 
I don't know. Shit, I don't know. So it's it's clearly, 12 lots rather than the four. Yes, if that works the six. Yeah. The six. I'm sorry, six. Maximum of six lots. Yeah, rewritten where it's, it's essentially we're asking for the entire development be a maximum of 12 lots. That's correct. Thank there you. you. Go. Thank you. Variance on the All right. Any more discussion? The second, the motion is amended. Okay, we got the motion amended and seconded amended. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All against, same. Okay, motion is passed. Thank you. Marta, did you get the, did you get the substitute motion or the amended? Okay. A little confusing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that closes item 5.5. And we're moving on to item 5.6. Public hearing to discuss request by LTD SBI and Ricky Garza, property owners for the variance for a variance from chapter 20 zoning, section 20-14, parking regulations, A, general regulations, six required parking for a non-residential use may be located off-site under the following circumstances. A, no more than 50% of the required parking where the use may be located off-site in accordance with the city's code of ordinances. The applicant is requesting to have a maximum of five on-site parking spaces located at 5102 Gulf Boulevard, Lot 1A, Block 156, Padre Beach Subdivision, Section 10. Okay, Alex, can you bring, give us a report? Yes, sir. Um, so basically, the off-site requirement is to be uh, less, I mean, more than 50% cannot be off-site, but they are requesting only five instead of the 50%, which is going to be more than that. How many total are we, they needing? Um, I don't have it in front of me, but they're about 28. 28 total, so 23 would be off-site. Right. Okay. And off-site meaning? <laughs> street, uh, off across site. the street. <laughs> One across lot. the street, across <laughs> it can be off site. So it has it's to be across the street from Gulf Boulevard, farther than 90 feet from the property, right? Off -site. Farther than 90 feet from it the property, it cannot be farther than 90 feet. It's across the street on Gulf Boulevard. That's uh, incorrect. To be off site, no, that's it. No, it's still considered off site by some vague definition, but this 90 thing, foot thing is like. Oh, well, we'll just throw that in there just, you know, because. <laughs> I mean, okay, if you look on off-site definitions on, on our code, right, guess what one of the first things that comes up is? It's off-site construction of a mobile home. That could be China. The next, or two more down, is a contiguous lot. You know, next door to your lot can be off-site. It's a bunch of hogwash, is all I'm saying, because we have no definition to go on. The city has no definition to go on to either approve or deny. Well, well site means it's and the it, property If it's question. right next to it. You can be on or off the, your property. That's basically I mean, what they're referring You can to. make up a definition that fits in your head, all, but there is none on paper, is all I'm saying. We, we can fix that if we need to. But, yeah, uh, probably because yeah. a lot rides on it, but it's kind of too late for this, right? So the, in, but, in, by, by the city's definition, that's not off-site, or it can be off-site, depending on what you want or what you don't want. It's not on the property itself that you're building on, so it's off that it's, property, even though it's adjacent or within... In, in uh, on uh, on, on uh, the form-based code is a thousand two hundred a thousand two hundred feet away, so I mean just depending on which code you're looking at. But he does have enough parking for what he wants to do. Okay, he has enough parking. Uh, yeah, that's all I want. Thank you. He's trying to put it off off site in order to. Let's not use that word anymore because it has no definition. Okay. Okay. So to put the property parking off the, this particular property line. Right. That's okay. correct. Okay, let's move on. Okay, anything else, Alex? Uh, but basically, trying to do it on another, another piece of property 
so that the bike lane, there's not enough, I mean, there shouldn't be much traffic on, on the bike lane. So that, that's his, um, I don't know if you wanna. Yeah. Thank you for, for hearing this, and <laughs> Mr. May, I'm sorry about that. There's this one. Can you state your nervous. name, please? For the... My name is Enrique Garza, sorry. <clears throat> I was nervous about this from the last discussions about offsite, because that word is used a lot here, and I understand your thoughts on that. And I guess basically it's kind of like, and I know it's its own different, but Juana Juana's. The parking across the street is off-site. It's not in Wanawanas. Uh, I mean, not, not Wanawanas, I'm sorry, tequilas on the bay side. Well, by that definition, all of the convention center parking is off-site. But no. because there's a road, there's a road in between it, right? There's a road in between. Because it's two different. What, I'm, what I'm saying, Mr. Garza, is that you have enough parking yes, sir. right next to your development. Whether or not someone wants to say it's off or on site is basically whoever wants to say it. There is no definition. Florence, uh, the I mean, we have we have beach parking. Florence off. too has Florence too is your best example of off street. It's across. Are we talking off street or on street? <laughs> off site or on site? It's on the. It's on the Florence too. Under your definition, there is no definition. It's a separate platted lot. Look at your look at your plat here, and you'll see. I know, but lot guess what? Is considered off. If we, if we consider South Padre Island as a recreational center, right? It's all on site, and we do that for parking for the beach. Where do we put? Are okay, well, off site. We this, put it at the convention center. This discussion no, no, no. here is not. No, it's not. This is very valid. This is it's not what we. What it's we're what we concern. Here. I suggest you sit down definition. with a city lawyer and you can go through this in detail. This is not the venue to be discussing this right oh, now. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, right. really? We're not the ones to say yes or no? I mean, based definitions these, based on definitions. We're not the ones these in these seats right now to say yes or no. Ordinances if you have a place. definition, you can say yes or no based on that definition. We don't. So we have to say, well, we can't say no because there is no definition to say we can't say no. So but we have to say no. What is your end game here? What do you need to know? I mean, what are you looking for? We've been dealing with these definitions of parking for many years and we've not seen without a definition a that's the problem think there's prerequisites the self-explanatory uh, there's prerequisites absolutely the not you're parking on your site or you're parking off your site the site is the property in question if it's contiguous then it can be off-site according to our is the property is defined by the plat <laughs> if it's contiguous and let's say i i say okay well it's if it's, it's the same, his, his it's lots, on the same his plat, lots for parking, it's on his the lots same for hotel, dimensions of the plat, it's, the, it's it, on site. There's an easement that goes in between his parking lots and his hotel lot, proposed hotel lot, right? That's the only thing that, that separates those two things. No. Yeah. No, you're wrong. He's wanting to park across the street. Yeah. That's an easement, right? Street is not an easement, it's, it's a, public property. It's a public right of way is not an easement. <clears throat> That's the thing. If you don't have definitions, it's, you can kind of play with stuff. We have a definition. You're the only one that doesn't. Where is it? Is it on paper? Huh? It's self-explanatory. Site and on-site and off-site. <laughs> self-explanatory. Okay. I'm sorry I if did, you don't I, understand that. Show I me. What it. to tell you? Show me it. I don't need to show you. All right. All right. I'm sorry, sir. That's I'm okay. sorry for this interruption. No, that's all right. Uh, my name's. I think we all, you understand that what we're talking on site and off. You have any questions with? That you don't understand that. I, I do understand. Well, thank you. I understand. I the appreciate that. Yeah, I understand the the requisites for that, and, and okay. you know, and I'd just like to to tell you all a little bit about what I'm trying to do. Um, my name is Enrique Garza, and I'm from the Rio Grande Valley. Um, I've always been involved in the island with properties or condos or houses we're building at the shores. Um, and we purchased the property next door to Wanawanas, uh, the beachfront, and the five lots across the street. Um, 
And I'm 50 years old, met my wife here. She's from Harlingen, have kids. Uh, we, me and other partners, similar in, in, in age and in, in families, uh, really want to bring something nice, nicer to the island, something a little more upper scale. Uh, think of Tulum when you go to Tulum and they have those boutique hotels. Think of Miami where they have boutique hotels. Um, this is not a spring break hangout. This is something where I can go and leave my kids in Westlaco and come with my wife and have a nice brunch and have a nice dinner. We're proposing a restaurant on site, speaking to a chef that owns three restaurants and came out on TV uh, to be the signature chef. Uh, we were here last weekend for our anniversary. Couldn't get into the Palms, took an hour and a half. F&B, phenomenal food, took an hour to get in. Uh, we feel there's a there's a need for something like what we're trying to propose. Um, depending on the variants, we you know we're we're going for 26 oceanfront suites. Um, no no nothing to the bay. It'll have a nice private pool area. Uh, it will have a restaurant, um, and you know I understand that we have to prove a hardship. If you look at the lot that. I believe you all have the paperwork. Right where our lot starts, it jogs back 30 feet, you know, not in line with one with the Wanawana's lot, um, which makes it quite difficult to put parking on site. Um, you know, the shape of the lot is already difficult to do what we're trying to do. Um, you know, and, and we did buy the five lots across the streets, which we're planning to have gated, um, you know, so that we don't use any of the city's parking. Uh, it will be a very private place. It, it will be expensive. Um, we're taking a big risk doing this. We planned for this two years ago, and obviously we're in a recession. So we're, we're thinking of going in a recession. But we believe that, that South Texas and the, the island are pretty, pretty strong. Um, and we really believe that there is a need, not only for local people. I, you know, I know the Frankies, and uh, you know, everybody's interested in doing, you know, having another option to go to eat dinner or to go and eat brunch. Um, and us local people that live in the valley want to have a nicer place to go that's a little more private, uh, where, you know, something upper scale. It is going to be upper scale. We're <laughs> contemplating maybe doing a viewing deck on top for the rocket launches and things like that. I know everybody's all about that right now. Um, there's other items that I believe it will benefit the city. One is I don't think any of us like looking at parking garages. Number one. Number two, very important safety at night. You won't have cars crossing the bike path coming in and out of the, the parking garage. We do have less than 90 feet across the street, all of those five lots, which are going to be resubdivided into one lot for parking. We fit 88 parking spaces there. Uh, I've been working with Mr. Sanchez to make sure everything complies with the city. Um, it allows us to do. Uh, three times the minimum landscaping requirement by not having a parking garage. Uh, we're going to landscape it very nice. We want it to be appealing for people to be able to to, to want to see something nice. Right coming off of that main street, you drive straight to that lot. So all the way from the bay, you'll be able to see this. It's not a very tall hotel, probably five, six floors. Um, but you'll see it straight across you know, all the way down the road. So I think the landscaping, I believe in, in, in beautification when it comes down to that. I think a lot of people lack on landscaping their properties, and I think that it needs to be done to have something high-end like what we're planning on doing. On top of that, the, the accessibility. You know, coming from an elevator from the parking garage, we all know during COVID, if it flares again, you can only let two people in an elevator. Um, it will also help that as well. Plus, we have more than enough parking across the across the street um, for um, for the project so that's that's really why we're asking for this variance um, we have a lot of confidence in the island and that's why we're taking a plunge and uh, and doing this we've been planning for about a year and a half and uh, didn't foresee anything going on right now but we still think this this place is going to be really strong um, so that's that's what I got any questions that I can answer <laughs> uh, so one, two, three, and four is where you're building the hotel. 
No, it's lot one actually, I believe. It's oh, three lot one A. Three and four on this on this sheet. So if I look on this sheet. Three and four. So three and four. And the parking is all of this. And then so eighteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty. Correct. That's the parking. Correct. And so you just want a parking lot there. That's it. Just a parking lot. It will be gated. I mean, it's going to be private area. I mean, the the place is going to be different than any place here. I'm not talking down about any place here, but we, I mean, we like to be spoiled when we go somewhere, right? So uh, we want to have something upscale. So yes, that's that's it. Three and four, one and two, we 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 used to own and we built condos and sold those. So one and two, it's just lot three and four. Okay, so three which is now lot one A, I believe. Right. Yeah, lot 1A. It's all one lot. Okay, so there's something already built on 1 and 2 now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and so 3 and 4 is what you want. And so then across the street is too far to be on site. Based I'm on not going to comment have. on that. <laughs> uh, we're, within 90, what, we're within 90 feet. <laughs> that's one of the prerequisites is 90 feet, but I'll let <laughs> discuss that. <laughs> Be on site. It'd have to be contained within lot one A. It'd have to be a parking garage under the on, on the first floor for the parking to be on site. That is the option. Is a parking garage by one by one definition. By the other, you shouldn't even have to apply for a variance. Right, because you're you're within ninety feet, right? Correct. Which is because that's all going to be subdivided as one lot. So our one lot is within sixty-five feet or so. If you were going to a hotel. And that's where you had to park. Would you consider that on-site parking? No. You wouldn't consider walking across that. I would consider anything it across the street is off is off-site. Yeah. We'll off area, which is the parking spots mm -hmm. on-site, will be to be on-site. It had to be within the perimeter of Lot One A. How much different is that from a mall or the convention center? There's no difference. It's all, it's all what people think. Just property line. That's the only difference. Quick question, Mr. Garza. Um, you, you mentioned that uh, you have you plan a maximum of five spaces on site. Is that you're definitely going to have those five spaces? You're not going to, you know, end up we have to have space? a we have to have drop off spaces, you know, okay. on site. So we plan on having be those. A minimum of five, then. Is that correct? A minimum of five spaces, but we want to keep the rest for lands. We want to really landscape and make the entrance really appealing. Okay. Um, for 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 this. Uh, hotel. Okay. It's not a huge hotel. Uh, it's it's going to be 26. I mean, w the same thing that we planned for before. It cost us the same to do 26 rooms now than it cost us to do 30 some rooms a year and a half ago. So, we're going 26. Uh, you know, and maybe even a little bit less. Uh, we want it to be very very unique. Um, you know, very private property. Hey, Alex, how many handicapped spaces would a facility like this probably require? I haven't looked at it, but it's based on ADA. We'll have plenty of them. So, but the required spaces are going to be asked for, so that's not going to be an issue. So pretty much all five of these spaces would probably be handicapped spaces. Uh, I would no, imagine. sir. We can do handicapped spaces across the street as well. Okay. It's right across. There's, there's a walkway over there. They just have to meet certain ADA requirements. For the spaces, it does not say that it has to be right there in front. No, of No, I was just curious how you plan to do that. Okay. The the uh, the unique shape of the lot. I know how it drops so off. 50, uh, <coughs> it goes from one to eighty. What have you have you figured what what the loss in parking would? I, I have not. I have not, but I can. But it's it's. Uh, oh, it is. Yeah, it I mean, it's it, it's enough that. You wouldn't even be here today. Probably. Yeah, okay. Correct. Probably wouldn't even be here today because of what, <clears throat> I mean, as it is, the lot's 38,000 square feet. It's not that big. Um, you know, and we were, we were challenged on, on this spot. I'm not going to lie because the lots, you know, to put a, a, a house, a million and a half dollar house right next to Wanawana's where they have their, their exhaust hood shooting that way and stuff. I mean, that's, that was something that was already quite difficult, you know. So, um, so me and a couple of other partners purchased the land from our other partnership and decided to do something like this. And you've given you've given that consideration. Your we're going to back up to Juanawanas. Yeah. yeah, we're going to okay. that way. It all stays on that side. Okay. 
today. Yeah, of course. Um, but uh, but we have plenty of parking. I think we were left with like uh, 90, 88 spaces. So it's more than enough parking. Um, so that should alleviate some of the city congest, you know, some of the city spaces as well, although it is private. I understand Juanawana's may be doing some more parking across the street, I'm not sure. Um, we're not here to compete against Juanawana's. You know, we're not gonna be all fried food. We're gonna be, you know, not there's anything wrong with that, but my wife's a nutritional therapist, so that's not gonna fly here. Uh, but we're hoping, uh, you know, I've, I've worked with Mr. Sanchez quite a bit on this already. And uh, as you all can imagine, this is not a small project. I'm quite nervous about it, but I'm excited because I think the island, I think it's time for the island to have something like this. Okay, thank you, Mr. Garza. Any more questions for him before we close the public hearing? Hearing none, we'll close that one. Thank you. And move on to... Item 5.7, discussion and action to discuss requests by LTD, SBI, and Ricky Garza, property owners for a variance from Chapter 20 zoning, Section 20-14, parking regulations. A, general regulation six, required parking for a non-residential use may be located off-site under the following circumstances. A, no more than 50% of the required parking for use may be located off-site in accordance with the city's code of ordinances. The applicant is requesting to have a maximum five on-site parking spaces located at 5102 Gulf Boulevard, Lot 1A, Block 156, Pottery Beach Subdivision, Section 10. Okay, now we'll open up for discussion among the board. Uh, I would like to start off by saying that, uh, again, we need to establish a hardship for this and not a financial one. Also, I, in, in a personal opinion, I do know that traffic is a major concern on Gulf Boulevard. Traffic, parking, probably one of the biggest things on Gulf Boulevard. So I guess one of the questions we must consider, is this improve or not improve the conditions there? It, it, uh, it seems to me that the hotel's gonna be built regardless of our decision today. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, the question is whether or not there's a hardship with forcing him to build parking on the first level, which uh, I, I tend to think that there is probably more a hardship for the city than for him in that it would cause, like as was mentioned, the safety issue with cars crossing that, that bike lane going in and out of a hotel, whereas the easy solution, having the parking directly across the street. Okay, any more discussion or questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, do we have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve. And I'll second that. We have a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll move to a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All against, same. Hearing none, motion's approved. <clears throat> okay. Moving on to item six, adjourn. We are now adjourned. 1023. Thank you all very much. <laughs>